Hey everyone, I wanted to take the time and create this video to show you guys what could be considered sort of an edge case, but really shows some of the cool things and power uh, that you might be able to do in Xano that isn't always so obvious and hopefully it gives you some uh, inspiration or maybe you could actually use something exactly like this uh, in your application. So uh, real quick, let me just give you a primer of what I've got set up here. First of all, I've created a something similar to a two-sided rental marketplace, something similar to Airbnb. We have a user table, uh, a table called listings, which are different properties, and then a table called reservations, which are uh, really taking the table reference to the user table, the listing, and then stuff like a start and end date. Okay, so imagine a user comes into this application, uh, puts their check-in, check-out date uh, for a listing, and then books a reservation. So in this endpoint, um, all I'm doing first, I'm just pulling all the records from my reservation table, and I'm just filtering it where the user ID in that reservation table is equal to the uh, user's authenticated ID. Okay, so you could just imagine this, like uh, you log into something similar to Airbnb and you go to some page that just shows uh, my reservations, okay? Um, with this for each loop, I'm just formatting um, the timestamp so we have something pretty to look at uh, instead of that Unix timestamp. So if I go ahead and run this, we'll say this is for, I think, user one here. Uh, you can see we have a bunch of different uh, reservations. There's that user ID listing and then these nicely formatted uh, start and end dates, right? So this isn't really sorted in any particular order, maybe just the uh, the ID number there. But since this is a two-sided rental marketplace, similar to something like Airbnb, when I go to my reservations page, I wanna see that reservation that is my next upcoming one, right? So if today's July 6th and I have something for uh, July 7th, I wanna see that one first, and then my trip that is next month, and then the one three months out, out there. So how do we create that sort? Uh, the first thing you might think is if we go to our query all records and we go to our output tab and if we add a sort here, you might think we might do something like uh, reservation start date, descending order, which is going to give us the largest timestamp, which is uh, the largest date, right? So the thing is, if we do that, what's going to happen is we're going to see our reservation furthest into the future first, right? So we see... Uh, December, which is at the end of the year, then November, September, uh, August, okay? And then we have this January one, which is in the past. So what we can do in Xano is we can actually create a dynamic variable to first sort on and then sort on the field, such as maybe the, the start date uh, that we want to, which would be our check-in. So how do we do this for this use case? So if I go into my query all records and I go to my output tab, I'm actually going to add an eval, which is going to add a new field to my response. Typically, evals are used to access uh, fields from things like join tables, but we can actually create an, ad, uh, an eval based on a field that already exists uh, in our original query. So if I go to add evals and just add one here, I might do something like we'll do reservations.endDate, and we'll call this the past. And what we're going to do is create a boolean. We're going to find if the end date uh, is in the past or not. So I'm going to go ahead and add a filter. You can add filters to evals uh, to uh, manipulate the data. And then I'm going to use this between uh, comparison filter. It determines if a value is between two other values. So since we're dealing with time, I might start with something like zero um, because that is the beginning of a Unix timestamp back in 1970, right? And then the right side between zero and now. So now is a moving variable, right? Now is always changing. I can go ahead and use that timestamp. I can hit update. Now I'll hit save and you can see uh, this past field will be created now. So now when I go and run that and let me just, um, yep, I'll go ahead and hit run and debug here. We still have, remember that sort on from um, the start date in descending order. But now we see this uh, Boolean here, this past, past is false. So this is in the future. Everything with false is in the future. You can see this January one um, is true. So that is in the past actually. Now that we have that Boolean, that dynamic variable there, what we can go ahead and do is we can change our sort. Let's go ahead and delete this. Let's uh, first sort on our eval, which is past. 
and we'll go ahead and say that in, in ascending order because we want to see stuff in the future. And then we can add our second sort. Um, in this case, we'll do our start date and we'll also keep that in ascending order. Okay, so first we'll get stuff in the future and then from the future, we'll get the smallest timestamp. So we'll be able to see what's uh, the next one upcoming of our reservations. So if I hit save, let me save that again. And now if I go ahead and run my reservations list, we can see, so today is July 6th, we can see this next start date will be uh, August 1st, then September, uh, November, December, and then we see um, our past reservations. But as you can see, uh, that will enable you to uh, get these records in uh, that sort of order. So uh, once again, kind of a more of an edge case, but as you can see, um, one of, one of those not so obvious things that can give you a lot of power to get, once again, your data as uh, exact as you may need to be. So uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully it was helpful. If it was, please like the video uh, and subscribe to our channel for uh, more content like this.